Hey everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Christy, Matt, Alonzo, I feel like I should have a cigarette for this one. Uh, Mike Wallace is here, is that what it's called? Mike yes. Wallace is here. Mike Wallace He's is here. here. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, because uh, I've been very busy with Outfest all week, but I want to catch up with it, because I've heard very good things. It's very good. It yes. premiered at South... Sundance, South by Southwest? It's been someplace. A, it was someplace. at some festival this year because I know I reviewed it ages ago. Film Fest. Or, or somebody, Ugh. somebody reviewed it for me. Uh, tell me about it. Anyway, y'all have at it. All right. So Mike Wallace is here as a documentary about the legendary newsman. Uh, he and producer Don Hewitt kind of arguably created the television news magazine. And Wallace pioneered the idea of the hard hitting interview. Um, kind of unscripted and uh, we see from a very early point in his career he gets a show um, Nightbeat uh, that lasts for a while and is this huge hit and then they get sued and then uh, he gets to kind of recreate that style of interview at 60 Minutes and it really changed TV journalism um, and made it you know he, he really took some uh, some tips uh, for better or for worse from entertainment and added some drama to the idea of journalism um, and it's fascinating It's because it's sometimes he gets hit with questions somewhat the way he would hit other people and, and mm-hmm. especially kind of in the 70s and 80s I mean the do water they talk g- about the insider uh, they, do. they do oh yeah. they do <laughs> they do and you know they, they put it in context that really you know 60 Minutes kind of just chugged along when it first started and it would get preempted a bunch and then Watergate happened and for a couple of reasons um Watergate really made that show. Mm-hmm. And the two reasons are one, Wallace had been working really closely with that campaign. He almost became Nixon's press secretary. So he knew all the players. And so he would bring folks in to do interviews, people like um, Ehrlichman and uh, Liddy. You see Ehrlichman and, sweating. Oh, God, that's so good. <laughs> and then the other thing is because of the format of 60 Minutes, they could do these long unscripted interviews and sit down with someone and he'd have these questions ready and he'd really go at somebody and they'd be, they'd have these two shots and he just wouldn't let up. And the show 60 minutes had enough time. Like, yeah, we'll do a 20 minute block of that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it be, and it made that for a time, the number one show in America. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from there they, you know, went on to greater and greater things. They do talk about the insider and how uh, they pulled that story and then went back up with it after the wall street journal. I think it was had run part of a, uh, deposition, I think, um, that they had gotten a hold of so then they could run the story. It, Fascinating. Are because there, are, are there, sorry, are there any clips of Martin Short on Saturday Night Live? No, I wish. Oh, no. no. So, but because no, but some of those clips run real close to that. It is because <laughs> Why he's, would you say that? there's so I much think smoking, so much, so many cigarettes. Um, because. He spent just decades of his life on television. There's this wealth of archival footage. And it's amazing to think about the breadth of people that he interviewed over the years from Vladimir Putin to... Anwar Sadat to... Malcolm X. Yeah, I told Khomeini. Right, Khomeini. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. uh, And then Betty Davis. And Barbara Streisand. And and Salvador Dali. Right. It's amazing. It's it's, it's it's so fascinating. And what I didn't know, which I thought was really interesting, yeah, was... um, that he created the persona of Mike Wallace that we knew him to be that endured in the culture for like 50 years because when he came to CBS News, he felt like a lightweight by comparison with like Walter Cronkite because he had done commercials and he'd done some TV and some game shows and some fun fluffy stuff. And then when he got to CBS, they all thought, who's this new guy? He can't hang with us. And so he, he created the hard hitting journalist, the take no prisoners interviewer that he since right. became he came from a it. hosting background. Yeah. Right. So That's he probably the best into Edward R. Murrow, basically. Well, <laughs> sort of. Like he like he came from this background as a host where he would he was a pitch man, he would host shows and he would do a little bit of acting. Like he'd started out in radio and then right as T V became a thing, he jumped into that and it was kind of, you know, everybody was kind of experimenting. And mm. so he was he was to Hank find, Kingsley for a while. Sort of. Like, he was <laughs> trying to find his place and find what he wanted to do, and he kind of came up with this idea of these really, like, go-for-the-throat interviews and these, you know, and, and because the, sh- the movie talks about how a lot of interviews at the time were really kind of pedantic and really kind of puff pieces and like, oh, hey, isn't it great that you're here and let's be <laughs> nice and oh, I loved your thing. And he'd bring in, you know, 
he'd bring in people and he'd really like put them on the spot, mm-hmm. right? Um, which at that point, like you know now, like oh, I'm going to talk to Mike Wallace. I'd rather be loaded for bear, <laughs> but nobody was at that point. Like right. you would go on TV and like, what do you? How are you asking me these questions? What? The, and you would see like he brings in a he brings in a clan grand wizard, mm-hmm. right? And he really goes after this guy. And he's like, well, you know, the guy says, well, I don't believe in violence. So we don't, we don't. And he says, okay, well, but your other guys have said this and that and this and that. And the guy kind of pauses for a second. He's like, well, I haven't ever heard them say that. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's kind of, you know, and, and there's a lot of that. And you see him really kind of hone that. And so when he gets to CBS, there's an expectation kind of everywhere from the new, outside the news department. It's like, oh. This guy's going to come in and shake things up. But he gets there and the news department's like, mm, lightweight, like, right. Or at least that's what Wallace thinks. Like he, he's got this that's his inspiration. On, yeah. But he's got this kind of combination of chip on his shoulder. And he's, he does feel like he's punching, like he's fighting way above himself because those were real newsmen. And he came from a hosting background. Right. And so as, and so they, he kind of was odd man out. And so was Don Hewitt. Don't tell me Matt. Tell me. Uh, sorry. <laughs> they no, care too. Um, but I also was fascinated by his interviews, whether he was on the giving and the receiving end of questions with other interviewers like Barbara Walters, like Oprah Winfrey, right. like Johnny Carson, to watch them go back and forth with each other is sort of a treat. And then Morley Saper interviews him. And that's sort of a through line here is, right. is his interviews with, with Morley, Sa- Morley Safer. And we he gets him to open up and be candid about his life and his decisions and his marriages and his depression in a way that he hadn't been previously and wouldn't be for a long time in his life. Cause I think he probably wanted to present himself as infallible. Right. And I think right. safer gets something out of him, especially because they go back longer mm-hmm. um, than anyone else had, you know, it's some of the other like Wesley Stahl and the other guy that's on 60 or a couple of the other guys from 60 minutes also talk to him. Um, you know, you do see, Barbara Walters is one of the few people that kind of put him on the spot the way he puts other mm-hmm. people on the spot. And, and, he, see him and he'll him say like, <laughs> yeah, this is uncomfortable. And somebody, you know, <laughs> at one point, somebody, one of the filmmakers asked him a question. He's like, oh, that's a terrible question. I don't want to answer that. Yeah. Right. And well, I think the director had worked for 60 minutes or he'd worked for yeah, him in some capacity so. at some point. So he probably felt like this is a subordinate to me and I can treat him like shit. I mean, I talked to a lot of people who have worked in news for a long time. Like, hey, this is Mike Wallace documentary. It's really great. Have you seen it? You know, everyone's got stories about what a complete asshole he was to work with. I mean, one of the first questions in this film, Morley Safer asks him, why are you such a prick? Right. And there's a point (laughs) in the movie where he talks about doing something. He's like, and then I became a prick. Right. And and he 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 knows it. And he kind of owns it. Um, But it's fascinating as Mm -hmm. a look of just like modern news and, and how somebody was there at the, birth of television and TV news Mm -hmm. and how he saw something, he saw an opportunity to do something nobody else was doing. And it, and it shaped not just the business, but the culture. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. I feel like no one's like that anymore. You know, I feel like so often people want to be buddy, buddy and schmoozy with the subjects that they're interviewing and they want that Instagram moment and they want the, you know, the insider ish cachet that they think comes along with being buddyish with somebody. I can't really think of, of a lot of people who conduct those kinds of really hard hitting interviews. Yeah, anymore. Although, you know, there's an interesting part where he's talking to Bill O'Reilly and O'Reilly would have mm. you believe that, Oh no, I get this from you. He carries on that. Right. Mantle, and yes. it's, but, but Wallace calls him out. He's like, no, that's not it at all. You're, you're just argumentative. What you're doing is not journalism. Right. Right, which has been leveled against which Wallace, is- <laughs> um, and for right or for wrong, like the the conference with with Wallace and some of the other journalists, where the uh, then editor from Wall Street Journal uh, mm. kind of goes after him, mm. um, is interesting to see. Mm. And you know, it's yeah, I thought this was a really interesting take on kind of news and and seeing you know he goes. I mean, they one of the key moments is he gets. When he goes and interviews Khomeini, mm-hmm. you know, he, he talks about, you know, Sadat, Anwar Sadat says, you're a lunatic, you know, and he says, I, I didn't forgive me. Right. I didn't say this. And you see the translators like, well, that, right. that wasn't an approved question. Right. But they go through it and he and he for and he kind of demands an answer out of Khomeini. And Khomeini says what translates to basically like, yeah, well, the Egyptian people are against him. And when people are against a leader like that, they 
they they revolt and they and they get rid of him. And a couple weeks later, Sadat got assassinated. Right. And you know, there you could argue that Wallace was part of what made that happen, mm-hmm. right? And I don't mean that like he, you know, like in getting that answer out of Khomeini and getting it broadcast, mm-hmm. you know, somebody clearly took that, right. you know, or at least that's how the movie presents it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it does talk about the the lawsuits that would come and the biggest one that hit them at, was the insider one, the Jeffrey Wiegand one, where, you know, for those people that forgot about the insider, Wiegand was a, a um, <laughs> Wiegand was the Wigand. guy, who, Wigand, Jeffrey Wiegand yeah. was the guy that basically said, yeah, we're trying to addict people to cigarettes. Yeah, and we're, so, we're putting shit in the Right, room. and so the cigarette companies threatened CBS, and CBS, or the news department, at that, that week caved, and yeah. then they came back later. But what they get into is how major corporations and major entities start, and really it came with Westmoreland, who sues for libel, mm. the idea that people would, like large, the rich could sue their way out of having bad press, right? right. Or just the threat of suits. Mm-hmm. Well, right? and, and anyway, you, it's and, really good. You guys should see yeah. it. And you've also got all these, all the major networks first owned by conglomerates now, which right. is just bad news for everybody. But anyway, yeah. what's your number? I'm saying uh, nine. Sorry, Christy has to. Leave I gotta go so. get my kid Sorry. at surf camp. Kids. They might throw him uh, in the ocean if I don't get there in time. Uh, so, um, chum. I, I also give it a nine. nine you said nine and a half. I'm saying nine point three. It's at a hundred percent on the tomato meter. So wow. Mike Wallace is here is good. All yes. right, I will check it out. Uh, hey, thanks for watching, you guys. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us at BeFastAllDay on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Visit our Patreon page at uh, patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay. It's where we do our TV recapping and our trailer reviewing and all the other kind of cool stuff that we do for subscribers. And if you are in Los Angeles this Saturday, July 27th, uh, Christy and I will be previewing the next episode of The Handmaid's Tale at Outfest at 1.30 at the TCL Chinese, and we'll be doing a live Live recap immediately thereafter. So if you want to see us in action and see that episode before it airs on Hulu, come check us out at Outfest. Thanks for watching. Oh, also real fast. Um, yes. Oh, I thought we to go. I do. <laughs> I'm interviewing Daryl Evans for the next um, a la carte. He is um, LA Kings legend. He is their radio color commentator. He has a lot of good stories to tell. He's a very nice guy. Daryl Evans on Monday. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.